So I thought it would be really fun to explore liminal today with you um, without really preparing hugely what I was going to say because liminal space or liminal mental space, emotional space is that thing between two places. So um, I had some thoughts last weekend and made these slides, which are very liminal, very kind of in between. And then I thought I'd just see what kind of came out. And if you feel anything is kind of coming out or you want to drop a comment, then let's just explore that as well. So in some ways, that's quite edgy for me because, you know, I like everything to be brilliant and perfect and I'm going to come and wow you with a presentation. It's not that today, sorry. Um, and in other ways, it takes the pressure off as well because it's kind of just a fun exploration, which I thought was quite nice. So um, just stand up for me a sec, actually. Let's just stand up, stand up. For me. Oh, no, it's bad idea. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. No, actually, no, uh, that's liminal, okay? That is actually, ha that's liminal, that's liminal. So I'm just kind of physically getting you into that liminal space. You know, that moment when, um, when you go to sneeze and you know you're going to sneeze, but you haven't yet sneezed, that's liminal space. So is it starting to kind of make sense now around liminal? You can speak as so well, you can say yes or no. Yes, yes. Brilliant, yes. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So this is me being liminal in a shoreline area in North Yorkshire. So what's interesting for me um, is that I feel super qualified to come and explore liminal with you today. I have grown up in the most liminal culture and liminal life ever. So I am from, many generations of fairground people. And we moved every week, two weeks. We stayed somewhere for quite a while in the winter, maybe four or five months, three or four months, but you'd still be off doing things. So I feel like a very liminal born sort of person. Like we were always between, betwixt and between places. We were always journeying and moving on. And I still have that feeling hugely. So I, uh, I'm here in kind of, in both capacities. I updated my profile on CMD somewhere. Um, I am an artist and I paint landscapes and I love this idea of translating what's really there, really there, what we think is really there, and what I actually see or what was there before or what might be there in the future and putting that onto paper and canvas. But then I also have other things that I do. So I also work as a creative strategist at Catapult here in Derby. And we're a theme park and attraction design uh, team and we work all around the world. So I kind of find myself moving into one role and then moving back into this artist role and then you know picking the kids up and moving into mum role and then going out with friends and remembering I'm a human and moving back into that role. So I think for all all of us, um, I don't know if that's a common experience, that we all feel that kind of transitionary feeling throughout our entire lives. And we had a comment on Instagram, actually, from someone, I can't remember who it was, about the liminality of elements as well, which is why I chose this picture, because it's sea, sky, rock, not sand, all kind of coming together. And where does one start and finish? You know, you think of the water cycle and where does, where does water become air and where does it become water again? And when it touches the land, when does it become wet sand and when is it water? And so there's all sorts of really, really interesting things. So I feel liminally qualified. I feel like maybe I have a PhD in liminality um, from my transient lifestyle, which I love. So we've all talked about, move the little hand, um, from the description from the chapter, we've talked about what liminal is. And like you guys, it was Tim a while ago, actually, who asked me to come and talk about liminal last year. And I kind of thought I knew what it was because years ago when I was a kid, I watched an episode of Columbo <laughs> where um, the murderer, because you know in Columbo, they always know who the murderer is, but the whole episode is about working out how they did it. So the murderer had actually killed someone by getting them to come out of a screening of a film of a desert scene by subliminally implanting images of cold Coca-Cola drinks or cold drinks of some sort in between this really hot desert scene. So the person got really hot, then definitely needed a drink and had to rush out of the theater where the murderer then bumped them off. So I kind of knew what subliminal was and we talk about subliminal messaging quite a lot. And I, I was like, well, what's liminal when you take the sub bit off? You know, what, what is that? And then I found out there was 
supraliminal as well. But basically, liminal is that thing that was described uh, by the chapter in Sophia, which is this betweeniness, this in-betweeniness, this, uh, you know, when you stand in the threshold of a doorway sometimes, or someone you're speaking to is in the threshold of a doorway in a meeting, perhaps, you know they're not with you. They've kind of departed from you in that meeting. They might be talking to you, or sometimes when people just do that, you know, that's a liminal sort of body language. It means that we're moving between the state and the situation we're in to somewhere and something else. And it's quite a powerful place to be, this um, sort of threshold space. But it's also incredibly uncomfortable. And I don't think we have enough discomfort in our lives, actually. And as creative people, I'm sure you'll find, and particularly for those of us who have to be creative on demand in creative service industries, that when you get too comfortable, you get to too designed by rote or too, um, not iterative, because that's moving forward as well, but too um, replicating of things. You kind of get a bit formulaic when you get comfortable. So I think overall discomfort is pretty good for creativity. Do you feel more creative when you're not in a routine? Do you feel more creative when you disrupt yourselves? Is that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I feel that, definitely. Um, and what's great about, um, liminality is that without a threshold or a doorway or a gateway, how are you going to get anywhere else? And what actually is a doorway or a gateway or a threshold? It can be many things. It can be an emotional situation. It can be a relationship. It doesn't have to be a physical place or time or space. So I always think that there's what we know and then there's what we think we know. Like we think we know how the natural world works. So I explore nature connectedness a lot in my work. And I've got a new series that I'm building up now, which is called Beyond and Between, which is what's between what's real and what's imagined and what's between what came before. So I'm exploring ancient sort of Anglo-Celtic mark making and things like that versus what comes next. And where does all of that time fold in on itself? So it's quite interesting to think that we think we know certain things, but things like physics and quantum physics and string theory and you know relativity and all those things are teaching us that actually we don't know a great deal about things. We didn't know, for example, that light can be both a particle and a wave, depending on how you, how you observe it. And it can be multiple places in the same time in the universe. I mean, that's just... And that's something we think we know, but how much about that do we really know? And I think that's what liminality is. It's not necessarily a space or a journey. That's a very traditional way of looking at it, but it's also two ways of what we think we know and what we actually know. I've done these slides very liminally, so they're quite hard to see, but that's on purpose. I'm not just a really bad graphic designer. I'm not a graphic designer at all, actually, because I make myself sound like I am one. So this is like a face going into nothingness. And liminality is that gateway between subconscious and conscious. That's why it's so important, because what we think we know is our conscious, and what we really know, often in our bodies or in our sort of cultural, social experience, is usually in our subconscious. And if there was no liminal bridge, gateway, portal, how on earth would we ever be in touch with where we're going and, and what we really know? And one of my concerns is that we mess around too much with our liminal experience. And I'm going to come on to that because it's kind of like an artery, right? If we think about your liminal experiences, whether they're physical, mental or emotional, it's like an artery or a roadway or a river. And all of those things can get clogged and blocked with traffic or debris or sludge or slime or whatever it is. And then things don't flow. And when we, I think, when we keep our liminal space open, keep our liminal brains, hearts, minds open, this stuff flows between our subconscious and our conscious much more freely in a much more real, authentic human way connected to people, connected to the planet, connected to our identity, our authentic identity, our, our sense of who we are and what we want to express in the world. 
And if we clog that up, I wonder and have been thinking about, well, where does our consciousness come from? And particularly as creative people, where does our creative output come from if our liminal pathway gets blocked up? And then how much of that is just perception of other people as well? So if we blog and clog our pathways up, is it because we're taking in too much external information? As a graphic designer, some of you are graphic designers or as photographers or as artists, if we're constantly scrolling through social media, seeing how everybody else does it and what the trends are and what the fashion is, all of a sudden, I felt it myself, my own work gets tighter and I, I'm, I'm suddenly, oh, I'm using that color again that, oh gosh, yeah, they've all been using it. It's actually planted itself in my conscious brain. I do this with Dettol, so I know this is not an advertising uh, platform, but I never um, sort of think about what uh, product I'm going to buy when I go down the um, detergent aisle or the disinfectant aisle. I just get Dettol because I know Dettol. It's, it's, it's a liminal, subconscious, conscious thing that I've done since a child. I do the same with Pears Soap, which I'm now swapping over. But, you know, there are certain brands that have kind of implanted themselves. And I worry that things can do that if you don't keep your liminal uh, pathways clear. So liminality really is just a perception. This is a liminal space. So transient spaces, hotels, airports, train stations, back of taxi cabs, they're all spaces like this corridor that make us feel like we, we're not there yet, like we're in between. I don't know about you, but particularly late at night if I'm on my own, if I've got my key and I get out of the lift at the hotel, you kind of, you just get to your door and there's that tiny little freeze on at the very end as the key's kind of slightly not working and you're thinking, oh God, is somebody behind me? It's a bit of a panic moment, but it's not massive, but there's a tiny little thing. So our perception is that these liminal spaces are discomforting and fearful and to be rushed out of. And yet, when you transform a liminal space and make it a destination, this is a fantastic uh, Acre Hall primary, which I found online, who had a corridor party. So suddenly a corridor as a transient space becomes a corridor as a destination and a celebratory space. This doesn't feel like a liminal space anymore. So it just shows us really that liminality and feeling discomforted and fearful by being in a liminal physical space or emotional space is just our perception. It's just how we frame it for ourselves. So what is framed can always be unframed. And as we know, sort of thoughts and perceptions lead to an emotional response, which lead usually to a physical behavior. So our emotion that we feel around liminality is is, tr is tricksy. It, like I said, it's discomforting. You know, that moment of standing up, sitting down, we felt a bit stupid and it was annoying and it was just like, oh, go with it, but please shut up, sort of. There's like a whole sort of aggy sort of feeling around it. And yeah, how do you feel when you're unwrapping a present? Yeah, and that's the liminal time, right? You know you've got a present, but you don't know what it is. So you're unwrapping a present and it feels fantastic. So there are some really amazing liminal times and places. I'm a huge fan of Christmas Eve. I think it's far better than Christmas Day. Christmas Eve to me is like the best liminal time of the year. That's a new song, isn't it? <laughs> Christmas Eve, <laughs> the best liminal time of the year. Um, so... Uh, the emotion around liminality can be challenged the same as your perception. And it's how you perceive liminal spaces and situations that lead you to, to your emotion. Now, this was a great quote from the amazing Wikipedia. Uh, liminality is the quality of ambiguity or disorientation that occurs in the middle stage of a rite of passage. To me, that really describes the whole of the human condition. I feel like I've been in this moment since I was born and I will probably be on my deathbed in that moment of feeling ambiguous and disorientated about what the hell is this all about? So if there was anything that really describes the, the whole of the human condition, it's liminal. You know, if you think about it as a transient journey between two points, birth and death are the biggest points we're ever gonna experience. I know this is getting quite philosophical for a Friday morning, but you know, it's going to be the biggest journey that we expect. We have no idea what comes before and we've got no idea what comes after. And I think that 
that um, uncertainty is what causes us discomfort about liminality. We love cycles. So the water cycle, which I've already mentioned, we all did this at primary school, right? So water is, flows in the rivers and then the sun comes out and it, you know, it evaporates and becomes clouds and then the earth pushes it up and gets hot and then it rains and then it comes down again. We love that because we can see exactly what happens at every point and we can understand it and it's very logical. However, we say the circle or cycle of life, thank you, Lion King, but we don't know what happens at the beginning. We don't know what happens at the end. Therefore, we don't really like it. You know, as humans, it makes us really uncomfortable. So I think liminal is the space we all occupy right now. So I think this sort of sense of adding extra liminal spaces might be a bit of an overload. Maybe that's why we don't like corridors and standing in doorways and standing up and sitting down a lot because we've already kind of got to our liminal um, benchmark you know we can only take so much liminality and if our whole life feels like it's a liminal process you suddenly go into another liminal space and it's like whoa too much too much liminal give me something secure that I can hang my hat on so there's the dark side of liminality that seems to get more traction there's a whole sort of design aesthetic that's, um, and art movements around liminal and, and liminal space and that feeling. And it all seems to be, from what I've found, I'd love to find some other work out there that, that pushes you to more of a positive place around liminality, but it all seems to be very much around the darker, more sinister, discomforting, fearful side of what's liminal, like that transient feeling of not quite knowing where you're going, that haze of confusion. And I wonder why that is. And I think it's because when we feel in a liminal space, and maybe like we said, we're already quite full up of being liminal because that's our whole life journey. So when we add another liminal situation on top, we, we increase our fear, uncertainty and doubt, which uh, I think it's a sales thing. People talk about the FUD factor, don't they? You know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt are some of the things that stop us from having really great decision-making, from feeling really confident and powerful in our creative choices, from feeling um, confident and worthy in our relationships and in our interactions and connections with other people. So fear and uncertainty and doubt feel like something in this modern design aesthetic around liminal that kind of gets played upon and amplified and you get what you focus on, right? So if you feel like your liminal time and space is all around fear, uncertainty, doubt, discomfort, confusion, that's how it's gonna make you feel. And these kind of demons come up quite regularly and I, I really do think that, that we get preyed upon, um, that, that there are plenty of people out there and plenty of media out there talking about having fixed ideas and knowing exactly where you are, who you are at all times in your life, being able to navigate every situation confidently, brilliantly, showing everybody you're navigating everything confidently and brilliantly on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and, you know, kind of flying through your career and birthing naturally all your children and, you know, designing an amazing home. And, and all of these things just feel as though there's a really fixed state that we need to be in, which is this kind of people are superheroes. And this really um, left brain oriented, logical A to B is really what underpins this whole fear, uncertainty and doubt around liminality. You feel like you have to cross the threshold as quickly as you can because you need to be on the other side doing this thing at this point in time. That's kind of crazy. You know, there's, there's many, many other species and uh, lives live, being lived in the world that don't have this direct A to B to C to D. You know, we're, we're going from birth at A to death at Z as fast as we possibly can because we need to be in fixed points in time, which we don't need to be in fixed points in time. And I think it kind of increases that level of... Um, burnout and stress of being in the know and, and in a, a defined, knowable, confident situation, which we think feels great, but is actually a huge amount of pressure. You know, you take the natural world and there are many animals that do A to B to C. You know, a lion will 
look at prey and know what it needs to do to catch, eat, share that prey. But then there's kind of so much time in the natural world where things are not racing from A to B to C. And yet as humans, we tend to do that to ourselves and put this pressure on ourselves. So I, I think liminality is a really powerful thing, but the more we race through it, the, the harder we make our own lives. So I think liminality is a real gift. And I would love to see us embrace it a lot more. And for those of you who are fans of Flow, the book by, oh gosh, here we go, Miali Six Cent Miali, I think it is. I always remember him being like a rapper, Six Cent Miali. Um, I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. But uh, the state of flow, of being in a totally engaged state by having a task that kind of pushes your skills, but also engages you emotionally and intelligently. To get into that flow state, you need to have let your liminal gateway flow between your subconscious and your conscious. Otherwise, you are busy, busy, busy in this conscious sort of over-manufactured world, which is busyness. It is not flow. Flow is highly engaging highly relaxing, um, time passes by mysteriously. You know, I can be painting for, and I'll go in the house, and I'm so sorry I've been out there for an hour, and my husband will go, well, you've been three actually. And I'm like, oh, that's flow. Um, stresses and strains and busy, busy, busyness is not that. We get to the end of our days when we've been in that state and we are all ready for the weekend, right? So that is a different way. So let's embrace liminality and give ourselves the boredom, the freedom, the time, the confidence to see being in a liminal, physical, emotional, mental place is a really great opportunity. It creates these opportunities to, to find new things. We all know that when we get bored enough, which is when our liminal stuff is going on inside of us, you know, we're kind of connecting. When we're daydreaming or that hazy time in the morning before we're fully awake but we're not quite asleep, Sunday afternoons are a great liminal time. It gives us opportunity to connect things and think about things. And, you know, who's had those random thoughts where you're just about to drop off? And you go, oh, oh, I'd love to see so-and-so again. I haven't spoken to them for ages. That's because your liminal pathway inside you is open and receptive. So you get all these wonderful opportunities that come up. Creativity as well. You know, we, we talked about designing by rote or creating by rote. And actually, if in these on-demand creative businesses of ours, we are constantly, constantly on and not giving our liminal space time to kind of process between subconscious and conscious or what's around us kind of coming in as inspiration, then our creativity does flatten out. It's, it's a way of re receiving the gift of inspiration without realizing it. Something will go into my head from weeks ago or an experience or a sensory feeling. And then all of a sudden I'll find it comes back out um, without really understanding why. And it's usually because I've given it space and time to do that. And it's very intuitive as well. So we're talking left brain, right brain, and maybe masculine, feminine. And by that, I don't mean male and female because we've all got masculine and feminine within us. Um, and it's a lot less linear logic. It's a lot more intuitive. So I see it being a lot more like this which is liminal is a lot less about rushing from those points A to B to C and stressing ourselves out. Giving our liminal brains, our liminal creative selves time to wander freely and meander and be bored and receive that wonderful gift of intuition is part of our liminal experience. I think without... Um, Without protecting it, we don't get this. And I know that we've all kind of heard this so much, but just in, in the sense of protecting that power motorway or amazing sort of magic portal of your liminal self, plugging it up with all of the social media and the content and the news and the buy, 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 bigger, better, faster, more, all this stuff is just a way that's going to stop you even getting, you know, into where this person stood. You're not even going to be able to meander around because you're going to be absolutely stuck at one point in time. 
And what you're also doing is you're handing over your intuition and perception to other people's. So like we talked about um, seeing all the, base, all the base trends on Instagram, for example, of like how everything should be done or what colors are in this year or whatever it is. You kind of can't get past that. And, and you think to yourself, we've all had those moments where you think, oh my goodness, I, I, I can't create something new. I can't, I can't have another idea. I'll never have another idea in my life. I'm sure we've all thought that. Um, and that's because we're accepting all this noise uh, before we can get on this really sort of lovely spiral path. So non, if, we, if we're blocked liminally, I see it as kind of a rush, a fear of a rush to move fast from in a very straight linear direction, very logically. Whereas I think if we give ourselves the gift of opening up our liminal selves, it's very much more intuitive spiral path of meanderings and wanderings. And these can be small moments. You don't have to meander and wander all day. You know, and it opens up your mind. I love this picture because it's kind of like without, without having our liminal selves open, how are we ever going to tap into all that magic that happens in our subconscious? It will come out somewhere. But if you are in the business of being creative, this is such a gem to use. You know, it's a tool that costs nothing and is unique to you that no one else can replicate. No AI can do. So this is a brilliant thing for you to be able to sell and to use in the world as part of your creative skill. And my last thought is, I think maybe being in a state of uh, being liminal is the natural order of the world. I think, and the more I explore it, the more I believe this, this really um, direct, logical, linear path is very much a human construction. It's very much taken over. We can see how it's taken over society of kind of the rush and the push to be bigger, better, faster, more all the time and to constantly be on. This kind of feeling is very much a human construction. So when we are in a liminal, uh, allowing our liminal selves to happen, and we move in and out of it, because sometimes we're in a conscious state, subconscious asleep, but when we're allowing that to flow really naturally, I think we're much more in tune with how the rest of the world is working. That's where the magic happens, because that's where the power of all the inspiration, all the energy, all of the, the, the amazingness of the entire world starts to flow through us. And now I'm getting a bit esoteric for a Friday morning. So we've covered social media philosophy, esotericism, and I don't think that's a word. Um, so I guess my final um, thought to you guys is just to invite you to think about times where you're in a liminal space, physically, emotionally, or mentally, and allow it to happen and don't be fearful of it. And build some time in your lives to let that kind of space and time flow. Don't rush to jump out of bed on a Sunday morning if you don't have to. Let some weird half sleepy ideas percolate. Um, and those are my thoughts around liminal. It's a bit of a weird collection of ideas. There was no beginning, middle and an end. There we go, there's a liminal joke for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's not very funny. But um, it's just a rambling. And I'm quite uncomfortable, you can tell. I'm talking and talking to try and find an end point, but that's not what liminality is about. It's a gateway. So I'm quite uncomfortable at the moment, feeling like I'm in a liminal space. You guys are probably quite disappointed as well. There's no big show-stopping gif at the end or, or anything. So I'm just gonna leave it there in a really weird, semi-finished, semi-open way. Thank you very much.